So now let's return to that challenge from the north. In 1449, the sixth Ming emperor was actually captured and held hostage by Mongols. And the alarmed Chinese turned their attention to their border defenses once again and rebuilt the crumbling long walls into a 1,550 mile long fortification with hundreds of guard towers. The long walls had existed, you'll recall, from the beginning of the Chinese Empire, but they had failed to hold off the Mongol invaders. Under the Ming's, the Great Wall was improved and extended, especially around the capital of Beijing and around the agricultural heartland of the north in the Liaodong province, north of the Korean Peninsula. These defenses enabled the Chinese population to rise from 100 million in 1500 to 160 million in 1600. However, the threat of a Manchurian land invasion from the north was taken very seriously. And this may have helped to prevent the authorizing of future naval expeditions. China's turning away from the ocean was a momentous decision in world history, which opened the door for Southeast Asians and Muslims and eventually Europeans to dominate the Indian Ocean and the Pacific. As the generations passed, the Ming emperors and their courts became increasingly isolated in the forbidden city that the Yongle emperor had built. Some were incompetent rulers, Others were just not particularly interested in ruling. Similar to other new imperial dynasties, the Ming had begun by concentrating political power in the emperor and in the civil servants that were chosen through the Confucian examination process. As time passed, a ruling class grew and power shifted as the new elite protected their lands and their possessions from taxation. Corrupt officials began siphoning off funds designated for public works to their own pet projects. And infrastructure such as dams and dikes began to crumble. Eventually, the irrigation systems failed and peasants began dying once again in widespread famines. At the same time, Manchuria was being unified under strong military leaders who looked admiringly at Chinese administrative techniques and adopted a lot of these techniques and even employed Confucian administrators. In 1644, a Ming government official who was dealing with a local peasant insurrection that threatened Beijing asked some of these Manchurians for military aid. Of course, once the Manchu army had gotten through the Great Wall, there was no way to send them back. They took control of Beijing and declared that they had acquired the mandate of heaven. And the Ming Empire was ended and a new dynasty was begun, the Qing or pure dynasty. We'll return later to the history of China, to the Qing dynasty and to what came after. For now, the point of beginning modern world history with China is that in terms of population and in terms of economic power, it was the center of the world in 1500 when our survey of modern world history begins. In 1500, the Chinese population was growing rapidly. It had already passed 125 million on its way to 160 million. The Chinese had a standing army of over a million soldiers. And the Chinese Navy under Zheng He had recently projected the empire's power throughout Asia. The Chinese economy produced a quarter of all the world's goods, a quarter of the world's GDP in 1500 followed by India, which produced about another quarter. In comparison, the 14 nations that made up Western Europe produced only about half of China's GDP, or only about an eighth of total world production. The largest European economy at the time, Italy, produced only about a sixth of China's output. And as I said, the Ming Empire's population in 1500 was about 125 million. The next largest empires were Southern India's Vijayanagara Empire, about 16 million, followed by the Inca Empire in South America, about 12 million, the Ottoman Empire in the Eastern Mediterranean, about 11 million, and the growing Spanish Empire with about 8.5 million people. Keep the immense mass of the Chinese population and the gravity of its economy in mind as we move on to discuss events like the creation of the Spanish colonial empire in the Americas. Spanish American colonial mines produced the silver that accidentally became the world's currency, filling the treasuries of Europe 
on its way to China in the 16th and 17th centuries. So some final questions before we end. First, discuss the symbolism of the Great Wall in Chinese culture. And finally, in what ways does my description of the size and the complexity and the age of the Chinese Empire potentially change your understanding of the early modern world? So we'll continue with Europe in the next installment of Modern World History. But that is all for now. So I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.